So let's begin about trying to understand the science behind the mutations of the coronavirus. This is a pretty complex subject, so the first thing I need to do is explain how Spike works and what actually is mutating. As you may recall, in our previous series on the science behind the coronavirus, the virus has this protein on its surface called Spike. And as you could see, this green area around the spike is called the RBD, and it's short for receptor binding domain that actually hits uh, your body. So this is the tip of the spear, and this is what is mutating. But sadly, throughout the body of the spike, we are now seeing mutations. Why is this mutation important? Well, it is this piece that's in the body that comes and attacks the rest of the body. And if this is the cell, let's say this is the lung cell, it is this piece of the RBD that enters this receptor called ACE. So the idea of how this um, works is a virus comes, hits this ACE receptor, takes this RBD, and enters into the cell, and you get infected. So you now have an infection, and this virus then uses the cell to grow and replicate. We've gone into detail with this in the previous series, but it was important for me to emphasize this particular action, because as this was the fear that we've had that we will create antibodies that would block this action. So that's what is designed as an antibody that will actually try and block this reaction. And that's what we have as monoclonal antibodies. That's in your body as a convalescent serum if you had a previous infection. That is the vaccine that we're trying to generate uh, what we call anti-spike vaccines, the Moderna vaccine, the Pfizer vaccine, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, whose goal is to, to generate these antibodies to block it. My fear is that this virus will mutate itself so that the antibodies can no longer recognize it and it will still be able to get in, and that is what we call by a mutation. Well, why is this particular mutation so dangerous that the South Africans have identified, called 501YV2? There is a special uh, mutation um, at the toe of this RBD. And let me have used the next few slides to explain, going a little deeper into the molecular dynamics of this mutation. So if I were to take the spike and reduce it to the green, and now you see the spike at the green, and if I were to take how the spike looks, and you notice the spike, you can imagine it to be a shoe. And the back is the heel, here's the arch. Let me draw, here's the heel. That's the arch, and this is the toe. So think of it as the toe, the arch, and the heel. And it turns out in the, in, in the viruses that have infected us, us in the first wave, the heel was the site in which it bound very tightly. And that's how it got in. The red ribbon is the receptor in the human body. We were fortunate to participate with Microsoft and we create what we call the molecular dynamic modeling. Huge, huge amounts of data through our supercomputer that took every element of this RBD and analyzed its motion, its interaction, its what you call molecular dynamic uh, binding and releasing. And what we discovered, this video is the simulation of thousands and thousands of data points right at the toe. 
and if you play this video you will see how the toe actually is repelled. So as you could see from this video the toe completely flops and moves and disconnects and there's very little contact between the toe of the virus and the receptor of a human cell. And the video on the right is a three-dimensional structure showing how this interaction occurs. Well, so what happens when the virus evolves and wants to increase its infectivity? It turns out it mutates the toe. Next slide. And here is this mutation, which has now been dubbed K484, because it's at that location of the toe where the mutation occurs so that it now has much greater binding and timing and to, the, to the ACE receptor. What's the consequence of that? Well, the consequence of that is the heel and the toe now have these binding points. Now we have increased the infectivity tens of times. Well, if it was just more infective, um, that would be increased transmission, um, faster speed, and in fact, that's exactly, you will hear how dramatically this has spread from the start of Port Elizabeth, ironically, my hometown in South Africa where I was born, all the way up and down the coast of Af South Africa. But we discovered a, a disturbing fact, and if I could look at the next slide, that, and this is a little complicated slide, but it alters its shape. So on the right-hand side, you see what happens when you have just a single mutant, which is basically the UK mutant, called the 501Y. There's some shape alteration, but when you actually have a triple mutant, if you look at these red dots inside this blue circle, you will see every red dot Every deep red dot rep represents a locked position of between ACE and RBD. So this virus has changed its shape, changed its configuration. It's equivalent of you taking an egg white, throwing it into a, 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 onto a hot stove or oven, and you'll see, obviously, egg whites or how, how protein changes its configuration. Well, what are the implications of that? As soon as it changes the co its configuration, uh, the antibodies may be less effective. It's like having a lock and key. The best way to think about this is the virus has figured out how to create a master key. So no matter how many locks you have, it'll find another key. That is viral evolution. The concern which we've never seen uh, as rapidly as this is how it actually can make multiple keys of multiple mutations simultaneously in the same virus. That is the new variant that we've seen. And you will hear next in my conversations with um, Professor Tulio de Oliveira how he and his team were able to find directly not only one mutations, but multiple mutations. And the key of multiple mutations, you will hear, is the consequence of that. What happens to multiple mutations as it relates to convalescent plasma, monoclonal antibodies, and perhaps even vaccines that are focusing on actually blocking antibodies against spike. The power of supercomputing has allowed us to model the virus with the RBD receptor, this thing in green, and the ACE receptor, these ribbons in red, to look at the biology of the human space. It's taken literally terabytes of data where proteins and proteins, I call this a dance of proteins, where they interact with each other. And what you see here are the proteins interacting with each other. And what we do this in a, a rendering model of three-dimensional space. And what you see is the heel, as you can see at the bottom on the right-hand side, the heel hitting and the toe connecting. And these triangles and circles are the mutations of the amino acids, the proteins themselves, that allow contact. 
what we found was in the very first wave, the toe, there was a negative negative charge so they would repel each other. The virus has figured out the most clever way to take the toe and now make it a positively charged amino acid and we theorize therefore the positive and the negative now attract each other and they bind. So the viral evolution is a natural thing. It'll find its way, it's an intelligent machine to be able to change its amino acids. What we've never seen or rarely seen and maybe only through the power of genomics because we have the ability to, to penetrate this kind of insight, you will hear from Professor Tulio de Oliveira that not one amino acid changes, which is normal, or two, but he's found eight amino acid changes, all simultaneously, which means this virus has the propensity to mutate and adapt very quickly to find the weak spots so that it could penetrate further. So I am completely of the view that blocking the virus from entry alone will be insufficient to clear the virus. What we would really need is not just blocking, but once it's in, and I think it's inevitable it'll get in, is to kill that cell in which it has entered and prevent its replication. That is what I mean by T cell, as opposed to just an antibody. And you may recall we have three elements to our human system. The antibody, the B cell, and the T cell. And if we can actually activate all three, that's our best chance to protect ourselves against this virus that will find and has found immensely fast the ability to, to penetrate and enter these the cells we have to counter that by, once it's entered, to clear that cell, kill that virus, kill that factory. I have said, and now uh, scientists have actually shown, that antibodies may not be long-lasting. B cells forget, T cells remember, T cells kill. Antibodies uh, may block, but T cells really matter in order to kill and clear this virus. At the end of the day, that's the hope at the end of this tunnel. We will present uh, the findings and conversations with Dr. Tulio de Vera, who made this amazing discovery, the disconcerting science he's discovered, but there is hope at the end of this tunnel.